Welcome back. Now, eyes are on Prime Minister Andrew Holness this afternoon to see whether he will accede to calls from various questions to remove uh, Everald Warmington from his cabinet for comments he made that seemed to suggest political victimization. Dennis Meadows of the PNP has also been polled as the candidate for the Trelawney North for comments supporting chopping or lottery scamming. This after 70 of Jamaica and well, some Jamaicans did not participate, or 70% of Jamaicans did not participate in Monday's local government election, disenchanted with the process, representatives, and perhaps the parties. But are the statements from the two men part of the problem? To discuss, we have on live, uh, joining us, Jeanette Calder on Zoom, Executive Director of Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, JAMP, and we also have Ms. Mikkel Jackson, Executive Director of Jamaicans for Justice, the JFJ. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Ms. Calder? Yes. Ms. Jackson? All right. So, if you're hearing me. Yes, I'm hearing you now. All right. So welcome both. But your reactions, firstly, Ms. Calder, and then Ms. Jackson, your reactions to Mr. Warmington and Mr. Meadows' statements well, in both of these instances, we don't think that this was an off-the-cuff remark. Everybody makes mistakes. In both of these instances, what we got from both gentlemen was a fulsome speech, letting us know exactly what their thoughts were, providing us with advice. I, I think in neither of these instances would an apology have been enough. Mm. So what the PNP did was the only option, I think, that should have been available to them. And I believe that the Prime Minister of Jamaica has also no other call that he can make, particularly because Mr. Warmington has years, I've counted 17 years worth of these kinds of transgressions. We can no longer make this a rescue effort about Mr. Warmington. We are looking right at Mr. Holness to make a call and a decision that this is not just about building infrastructure. He promised he would build accountability. And we're waiting to see his real definition of that in this instance. Um, before we go to Ms. Jackson, Ms. Jackson, I hope perhaps you could come in on this point, because as you mentioned, Ms. Calder, Mr. Warmington does appear to be a repeat offender, and he says his comments were misunderstood. But is this another case of telling us we did not hear what we heard? Ms. Jackson. Um, let, let, thank you so much. Let me start first by saying that we do welcome Mr. Meadows' withdrawal as a potential candidate for the People's National Party. But I think the question we also have to ask ourselves, while this video came to the public light um, yesterday, how long ago was the PNP's leadership aware of it? And I think as the PNP's leader speaks about accountability, accountability must be within the framework that we do not only make positions or calls or actions when there is a public outcry. It has to be that your actions are warranted and merited on your own impetus. And that is something I want to put in, um, in, in the conversation here. Regarding Mr. Warmington, we believe that he ought to be removed from the cabinet altogether. I note his apology, if you can call it that. Quite frankly, it was filled with obfuscation. I think this is an apology that I say you take Jamaican people for fool, because mm. there is a video that is clear. You're making comments that speaks to political victimization, basically saying that you're going to be using public resources to give to a candidate that is not elected, that is a potential misappropriation of public funds, if that were to ever happen. The fact that this apology came to the public light, even the authorship of it, is questioned. Because mm. we don't see anything. The media tried calling Mr. Warmington after, and I'm sure CVM didn't get through either. So that is also no. a question. I know no. that it was also taken down from the Prime Minister's um, social media platform. Second to that, we have gotten nothing from the Prime Minister of Jamaica, the leader of our nation, the head of our executive branch, that this will not be tolerated. This is an appropriate time for the Prime Minister to utter the, the line that says, not in my cabinet. Uh, Anything less than that is a scant regard for good governance, decisive leadership, and say to the Jamaican people, accountability don't mean nothing in this country. 
It's, it's interesting because you mentioned that there should not necessarily be a requirement from the masses to demand such a removal in instances like these. Because leading up to the, the end of the campaign, I remember there was another situation with another potential candidate or a candidate actually in St. James who was in some ways ex exalting uh, the idea of lottery scamming and becoming a part of that trend on social media. But I'm unclear as to what exactly was done about that individual. So that's another matter. But Dennis Meadows has now been relieved of this caretaker role in North Trelawney. Uh, does this cure the issue? We go back to well, you it, and then it, we it, take Ms. Calder. Um, no, it doesn't, because I think it speaks to an underlying issue about governance, because I think there ought to be some standard, and there is actually with the political code of conduct, but how are we preparing even the younger ones to adhere to it? The, the type of leadership that is expected as well also means that us as citizens have to demand more. When you look on social media, people are saying, but it's just a little comment. It's in the heat of the moment. From Mr. Warmington, you hear people saying and excusing it. He said, my money. We have to raise the standard of leadership among us as citizens and then demand that our political leaders rise to that standard. But the political code of conduct is very clear. And that is why personally, and certainly from JFJ's standpoint, we believe that there ought to be the imposition of fines and penalties for some actions within the political code of conduct. Because clearly, moral suasion has not been enough for the political leadership. Ms. Calder, what does this say about the type of discourse that still surrounds our politics in Jamaica? Well, I'm glad you said still surround our politics because I think I would do the, the listeners an injustice if I didn't remind them about strikingly similar situations 17 years and two months ago. Mm. In December 2007, right before the local government elections, Mr. Warmington, then a junior minister, was caught in another hot, hot mic situation. And what was he saying? He was threatening the people of Old Harbor Bay that he had already advised the Minister of Labor and Social Security that if the people of Old Harbor Bay did not exercise their vote for the Jamaica Labor Party, they would not be getting hurricane relief checks. Does that sound strikingly similar? That's 17 years ago as a junior minister. Over the 17 years, there are countless other incidences. But what has happened? Mr. Warmington has been now promoted. Where is he serving the people? As a senior minister with our portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister of Jamaica. So his boss, his supervisor, is the Prime Minister of Jamaica. The point I'm trying to make here is that Mr. Warmington has squandered this discourse you're talking about. Our, our, our ministers have squandered every opportunity. We have exercised grace and mercy. They have continued to be promoted, and we're not seeing anything definitive in terms of accountability on, on the part of, of the boss. And the boss now is the prime minister. Back then, really quickly, I recall the civil society group Cafe demanding yes. his dismissal. And his response was, they did not hire me. They cannot fire me. The prime minister has hired him as a cabinet member. We are calling on the prime minister of Jamaica to demonstrate that we are no longer going to tolerate another 17 years of this kind of discourse. The only option open to him now is to fire Mr. Warmington. That's it. You mentioned something just now that's quite striking. What does that say about leadership in this country? And I want to piggyback on that right after to ask you both to respond to the what if the prime minister therefore does not act on Mr. Warmington's matter. Well, there are two levels of leadership. And the press release that Jam sent out literally is saying Jamaica deserves a leadership that values and honors respect. And uh, there's the leadership at the level of um, Minister Warmington, and then there's the leadership at the level of the Prime Minister. And I would say that it would be a, a serious indictment against leadership. I'm proud of the leadership in civil society, in the private sector, for making this call. I'm not very proud today of the leadership, because even though Mr. Meadows did apologize, Yes. The point is, he has been a leader for quite a long time, from a senator aiming now towards a caretaker. What not? We have another year and a half when we will be able to vote again. The people of Jamaica will decide at the ballot whether or not this is what accountability should look like. And that is something the prime minister will have to wait when he makes that decision. It would be very unfortunate, though, 
if that's the basis on which she decides to actually dismiss Mr. Warmington. She'll just do it because it's the right thing to do. Understood. Uh, Ms. Jackson, what if the I Prime Minister people, doesn't act? Well, firstly, young people are looking on. You look at a 30% voter turnout, it says a lot. People are, are, are just completely disengaged from the process simply because of the type of leadership or the lack thereof that have been displayed. Secondly, I think this is a test on the leadership of Mr. Holness, that if by end of today, there is no statement coming from the office of the prime minister that member Warmington has been removed, certainly people will no longer listen to the prime minister when he speaks about accountability. Far too often this type of imbroglio has happened and you say, let the nine days pass on. I can tell you from Jamaicans for justice, we will not let up on this particular issue. I think Mr. Warmington has done his time and I think it is time for him to say, let me resign. And it is also incumbent and the prime minister to indicate to us that Mr. Warmington is no longer a member of his cabinet. Anything less than that is demonstrative that the Prime Minister has an inability right. to, to, to really make decisive action. And quite frankly, it will also suggest that the Prime Minister condones what Mr. Warren has said. Exactly. I want to lastly point out that just recently, and I have to keep mentioning this, the comment about the gerrymandering of Portmore. These were utterances made by Mr. Warmington. You're talking about political corruption that has plagued this country for years. And you're talking about gerrymandering and now possible misappropriation of funds and political victimization. Mr. Warmington is speaking as if Jamaica is back in the 1970s. But this is an age where we're saying, again, enough is enough. And I call on the people of Jamaica to stand with civil society, jump NIA, JFJ. And if Mr. Holness does not remove Mr. Warmington from the cabinet, I ask us all to rise up and say that we will not tolerate this type of lack of leadership in our country. Final remarks from you now, Ms. Calder. Mine is that in 2015, almost uh, eight years ago, the Prime Minister of Jamaica did make a promise to us. He said, if you put me in that office in 100 days, I will redraft and put before the parliament a bill that will allow citizens to impeach parliamentarians. And for what? For matters of misconduct and putting the people of Jamaica and his office into disrepute. Promise not kept. So right after dismissing Mr. Warmington, I think one way in which the Prime Minister can certainly redeem himself is to honor the promise he made if we put him in that house. We've done it twice. We're calling on him to go beyond Mr. Warmington and give the people an impeachment act that puts the power in their hands to determine who they want to hire and who they want to fight. Thank you so much. That was Jeanette Calder from the Jamaica Accountability Meter Portal, JAMP, and Mikhail Jackson from Jamaicans for Justice. Thanks so much, ladies. You're Thank you.